Today on Ortho 2, I will be talking about the important paleontological discoveries made in the month of March. This video is part of a collaboration with 11 other YouTubers. Together we will cover each month of the past year. Make sure to check out the video before this done by Omega Pictures. A link can be found in the description. So without further ado, let's get into it. March. The not-so-dinosaurian dinosaur found in amber. Paleontologists have found an exceptionally well-preserved skull of a previous unknown animal named Oculidin tavis cunangre. It was originally described as a bird-like dinosaur species. This created headlines around the web of a dinosaur discovered in amber, but this paper was not without criticism. Critics such as Wang et al. have noticed a deliberate use of ambiguous language by the author. Phrases such as bird-like were of concern. Upon further analysis, it was found that if Oculin and Tavis was a bird, it challenges several fundamental morphological differences between Lepidosauria and Archosauria. Morphological evidence highly contradicts the avian or even Archosaurian phylogenetic placement of Oculin and Tavis. An analysis revealed multiple synapiformes of squamata in this taxon, including pleurodont marginal teeth and an open infratemporal fenestra. This suggests a squamate rather than an avian or dinosaurian affinity. On July 22nd of 2020, the original Nature article describing the genus was retracted. This paper also started controversy about the practices involved with the discovery of the fossil. The Burmese amber trade has been an ethical dilemma in the paleontological community for some time. Poor working conditions, underage workers, and allegations that the trade of these fossils has funded the Kachin conflict. A trade of such valuable amber is akin to blood diamonds. As of April 2020, the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology has discouraged its members from collecting and studying Burmese amber due to the connections between the resource and human rights abuse. Hopefully these amazing fossil remains can be collected and studied in an ethical way in the future. The Wonder Chicken A new species of ancient bird has been discovered from a nearly complete skull and other associated bones. A three-dimensional analysis of the skull reveals that the specimen possesses waterfowl and landfowl-like features. This suggests that the bird is close to the last common ancestor of modern chickens and ducks. It is nicknamed the Wonder Chicken but scientifically named Astrionornis mastrochensis. It lived 66.75 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. The remains were uncovered in a limestone quarry near the Belgian-Dutch border. Researcher Juan Benito of the Department of Earth Sciences at Cambridge said, Finding the skull blew my mind. Without cutting-edge CT scans, we never would have known that we were holding the oldest modern bird skull in the world. The animal was clearly a modern bird. It combines features common to the living group known as Galon Surrey. The origins of birds and their diversity is shrouded in mystery. It is known that birds evolved from dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous. Other than that, there is very little fossil evidence of them until after the asteroid hit. That is what makes this fossil so interesting. This fossil tells us that in early bird evolution, Birds were small, ground-dwelling animals that lived near the seashore. Hopefully future discoveries will shed more light on this fascinating time in evolutionary history. New Relative of Velociraptor A new species of Dromaeosaurid dinosaur being named Dinobellator notohesperus has been discovered by a team of U.S. paleontologists. This raptor lived 67 million years ago in late Cretaceous North America more specifically in what is now New Mexico. This dinosaur stood 1 meter or 3.3 feet at the hip and was 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet long. That is a similar size to its very famous evolutionary cousin, the Velociraptor. While dromaeosaurids are better known from places like northern United States, Canada, and Asia, little is known about the groups farther south in North America, said Dr. Stephen Jasinski a paleontologist at the University of Pennsylvania. The specimen was not complete, but importantly, bones from the forearm were discovered. They were found to have quill knobs. 
Quill knobs are small bumps on the surface of bones where feathers would be anchored in life. The presence of feathers on a dinosaur that lived this far south is further evidence that feathers were not only present in cooler climates. It also had other unique features. Enlarged areas of the claws allowed it to strongly flex its arms, a trait that would have been useful when hunting birds, lizards, or even larger prey like small dinosaurs. Most dromaeosaurs had straight, stiffened, rod-like tails. The tail of Dinobellator was more flexible at its base while the rest remained stiff. A stiff tail that is highly mobile at its base allows for increased agility and changes in direction, and potentially aided Dinobellator in pursuing prey, especially in more open habitats. Dinobellator provides a clear picture on the biology of North American dromaeosaurids, especially concerning the distribution of feathers among its members. As we find evidence of more members possessing feathers, we believe it is likely that all dromaeosaurids had feathers, Dr. Jasinski said. Sorry to anyone clinging on to the Jurassic Park models of raptors. Bruh. Oldest Bilaterian A worm-like creature that lived 555 million years ago was discovered in what is now Australia. It is known as the Oldest Bilaterian. Bilaterians are animals with bilateral symmetry. This means that they have a right side and a left side that are mere images of each other. They also have a front side, back side, as well as a belly and a back. Though this life form is very primitive to us now, bilateral symmetry was a very important development in animal life. It allows life to move in a purposeful manner and provides a better way to organize their body. Evolutionary biologists that study the genetics of animals predicted the ancestors of all bilaterians would be small and simple. Finding a fossil of a soft-bodied animal from over 500 million years ago is a great challenge. Paleontologists agreed that fossilized burrows found in South Australia were made by bilaterians. It wasn't until they noticed small impressions that they found their culprit. A 3D laser scanner was able to unveil a consistent cylindrical body with a distinct head and tail. The animal was named Icaria wariutia. It ranged between 2 to 7 millimeters in length and 1 to 2.5 millimeters wide. The largest were about the size of a grain of rice. Though simple, it was pretty complex for its time. It moved by contracting its muscles across its body like a worm. It likely had a mouth, anus, and stomach. This is what evolutionary biologists predicted. It's really exciting that what we have found lines up so neatly with their prediction, Professor Drozer said. New pterosaurs. Paleontologists have uncovered the remains of three species of fish-eating toothed pterosaurs in Cretaceous period chemchem beds of Morocco. Pterosaurs were Earth's first winged vertebrates, with birds and bats making their appearances much later. They thrived from about 210 to 65 million years ago, when they were wiped out by the asteroid that doomed the non-avian dinosaurs. Some pterosaurs, such as the giant Asdarkids, were the largest flying animals of all time, with wingspans exceeding 9.1 meters or 30 feet, and standing at heights comparable to modern giraffes. The three new specimens were obtained from fossil miners in a small village in southeast Morocco. The fossils are 100 million years old and the animals belong to the Anhunguera ornithochiris and Coloborhincus genera. Anhunguera was only known from Brazil. Ornithochiris had until now only been found in England and Middle Asia. Their addition raises the total diversity of pterosaurs from the Kenkem beds to at least nine species. Pterosaur remains are very rare with most known from Europe, South America, and Asia. These new finds are very exciting and provide a window into the world of pterosaurs of Cretaceous Africa. Jacobs and colleagues found that these African pterosaurs were quite smaller than those found on other continents. Their world included crocodile-like hunters and carnivorous dinosaurs, with few herbivores. Many predators, including toothed pterosaurs, preyed on a superabundance of fish, for such large animals, they would have weighed very little, Jacobs said. Their wingspans were around 3 to 4 meters, 10 to 13 feet, with their bones almost paper thin and full of air, very similar to birds. This allowed these awesome creatures to reach incredible sizes and still be able to take off into the skies. 
they represent that there's still so much more we can learn about pterosaurs. The month of March has some pretty amazing discoveries. Thanks for watching this video. It would be great if you could subscribe to the channel. I make videos about prehistoric animals, ancient man, and even the occasional full-length documentary. After this video, make sure to check out the next video in the series. This video can be found on the channel Cretaceous Cast. I have a link to it in the description. Thank you.